questions. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Awaken Hidden Truth. We are back again. Hello, Scott Lemriel. Hello, Perry. Good to Actually, see you. Just, yeah. Glad to see you too. Actually, we just finished taking people to go on the journey, Thai people to go on the journey. Today, many of them, like 26, which is a very good sign. You know, people start to be to the uh to be free, you know, from 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 what? Well, I think from... most most people on earth are so easily distracted by entertainment and misdirection. So much of what's on the internet, not criticizing any one group or anything. So much of what's on the internet comes off with a smiling face, but it ends up putting out fear and negativity, which doesn't help the world or anybody at all. Um, so my work contains no negative nature in its presentation or on the journeys. The journeys we go on, the long journeys, not the implant removal ones. Actually, generally, I try to get people up to the void, up past the lower planes of time and space, past the void, and with permission in Satnam's realm, then we start to help them people see what they can no longer see for themselves on Earth. Places and locations of planets and cities and how the different doorways between dimensions work and what's on to be expected to find in Satnam's realm. If they don't have any visual of it, there is no way ever on this planet that the omnipresent power will take them there or allow them there. They have to first show it. They know how, remember how to see to go there because our original purpose for existing is to be trustworthy, conscious co-creators with the source behind all life. And that source is way up higher than this Atma plane where Satnam is. It's higher than the void. It's higher in his realm. It's many planes above there. And there is a being named Agam Purusha who we have to pass through by permission to go up to the source itself. And if you don't go there respecting or knowing how to see anything that's there, you'll never get there. It's impossible. And there's no negative nature in the void or above the void. So we cannot bring anything like that with us. And how about some people? If some people, they have watched our videos, taking people to go to the upper worlds, to go to the Satnam's plane, they just watch the videos. After that, can they go to these places, to this plane by themselves? Not without training and preparation, no. Doesn't matter what they tell people. They have to have permission of Sat Nam to just think you can go there and use Sat Nam any way you want. It does not work like that at all. It took me a lifetime to prepare. Four books I had to publish to finally get permission to come out to the public of this world as part of an ongoing flow of a new energy in the omnipresent power that's designed to help put Earth through a transformation, unexpected transformation. Because the way people are on Earth for thousands and thousands, even hundreds of thousands of years, all the praying, all the things they've ever done has not changed this world one bit. And it's mm -hmm. heading more towards destruction than it ever has been. So it's going to take respectfully the intervention of beings and master teachers from other realities other planets in large number because they have the choice to do so now to fix this planet earth because otherwise people will destroy themselves here it's absolutely a certainty so people on earth are not awake enough in enough numbers to change the direction of this world in time it has to come from outside so when when i go on these journeys. I work with master teachers who I would not endeavor to take anyone on these journeys without them. And I have permission and trust from them and I trust them and they trust me to do this work, which took decades of preparation. You don't just look at it and copy and paste it and go do it. It doesn't work. It can't work that way. These beings cannot be manipulated or controlled by anybody on earth, no matter what they think. They are way beyond that silly stuff. They're not interested in the things that interest people on earth, money or power or fame or fortune or any of that stuff. They're way outside of that. And they do what they do of free will. They cannot be manipulated. So when I approach them, it's respectful because I know them. I would trust them with my life. And when I go up and see 
Sat Nam, who starts on these journeys with us, which he's never done before. He gives us permission to go into the void and up to the shore of his realm. Without that, you don't get there. I don't care who you are, on what planet or what dimension. That is a guardian, and there's there for a reason. You can't have people going to the higher worlds that have no negative nature, attempting to bring negative nature with them of any kind, because it won't even go into the void. The void is a pure hue barrier between the lower planes of time and space and the upper realities that most people on Earth haven't got a clue even exist at all. If it hadn't been for this work, they wouldn't even know it now at all. The beings I introduce to people here are not to be used. They are to be experienced and respected. That's why they work with me and I work with them. It's very clear. This isn't by uh, some whim because of some power trip or, you know, my motivations to keep this work from having any negative nature at all is very clear. It's part of my destiny and my co-creative work with Source itself. I go back to the Source because I've been to the Source and I have permission to go there. I co-create with Satnam and Agam Purusha because I respect and trust them. They know this about me or I wouldn't be there. Just that simple. So I hope that answers people's questions. This work is not in competition with anybody on this planet because no one can compete with it. If they don't even know about it and wouldn't know about it if I hadn't chosen to do this work with masterful friends from out of town who also chose to do it at this time. They wouldn't even know about any of it. And not respecting that just means their motivations are not coming from a pure heart. They're not coming from the right motivation. There's power or money or something involved that's, you know, it's not my place to point anybody out or find fault with anybody or criticize any particular religion or political country. But the fact is most people on earth are making decisions every day based on some kind of subconsciously influenced fear. Fear is negative and the only repercussions in space time according to one primary law of physics, which is every action creates an equal and opposite reaction. The only thing that can come back from making decisions based on fear is destructive. There's no constructive thing can ever come from that. So we don't want to make our choices in life and co-creating with other beings who don't have subconscious minds do not operate from fear. We want to work with them in a similar manner or they won't work with us. I hope that's clear. We're here to, yes, clear. Thank you. We're here today not to take people to go on the journey, but there is a question I'd like you to answer from sure. Hope Home. May I ask about the exercises at the back of the book, whether we should do it one by one after finish each chapter or we do it do exercises after reading the whole book? Thank you. I think people on earth are trained to think linear, linear, linearly, you know, Correct. one thing after another. But the multidimensional universe does not work in a linear way. It does not. The book, The Sayer's Agenda, was written. It took five publications of that book to get those special techniques in the back of it because Torellian insisted upon it. And it was a lot of work, a pain in the backside, to be honest with you. But somebody had to actually write those techniques and write those books. And it took decades and that is something that must be respected by people who acquire these books and want to know truth and have direct experience for themselves. Because if they don't respect that, they're not respecting the source you itself, which comes through this work by its choice, by co-creativity with us, with it. So they can do the techniques any way they wish. If they read the book, what I would suggest is they don't play games with themselves. Read the book from beginning to end so you know where it goes and why it goes there. Now, if they get stuck somewhere in the book and they can't understand something, I would go to the table of contents, pick a chapter, the titles are very intriguing, right? And pick one that stands out to them and go to the technique for that chapter. Do it and then continue reading. And then watch what happens. When they're done with the book, they can pick any one of those techniques that lights up for them. One day, 
They may be kind of having visions of a past life they had long ago. So you go into, the, like, for instance, the chapter titles in this book. Oh, gee, taken beyond Earth. Well, we know what that is. Somebody's taken beyond Earth. It's picked up on a spaceship and taken outside Earth's atmosphere. With eyes wide open means waking up to something you didn't know. Guests from way out of town means guests from other worlds. The mysterious Mr. Crystal is mysterious because he's a human from another planet. He's not from Earth. Arriving aboard the mothership means arriving aboard a cylindrical spacecraft that houses many scout craft and has anywhere up to several thousand personnel from many different worlds. The grand deception. If people want to know how they're being deceived on this planet by a classified government who themselves are trying to get free now, read that chapter. Go through that technique. If they're parting the subconscious veil, what is the subconscious veil? Implants, subconscious programs, negative, to try to keep people from remembering who they are. So the tyrants who put them here can't be caught and pointed out. That's mm -hmm. what an implant's designed to do. Escape from reptilian claws speaks for itself. It is important for people to know, because this is the only work that tells this on this planet at this time, is because reptilians are no longer on this planet, not in secret bases in Antarctica or in Area 51 or anything like that. There are no little greys abducting people. None of those beings have been on this planet or in this solar system for 25 years going on 26. They were removed, but not by people on Earth, or we would be in serious trouble. So there's some catching up people in the disclosure community need to come up to speed and realize they're not working in present time. And they need to if they really want to know for themselves. The secret mountain base has to do with Mount Shasta in Northern California. I'm a 55 minute drive from this mountain. It is not what people think it is. It has very high energy coming from it, but not because of portals to hollow earth or anything like that. Those places are in parallel dimensions, not actually inside the planet. And a lot of people will find, fight me over this. I don't care. It doesn't matter. They have a right to believe whatever they want. But when you have direct experience with a Galactic Alliance base that was built in that mountain in 1908, then things change. Destiny Reunion, figure it out. The Chamber of Prime Creator. Well, that means a Galactic Alliance parent ship, the big ones, have a chamber with a pyramid in it and an eye, like the all-seeing eye. And there's a direct link between source energy and that chamber aboard these galactic craft. They don't just fly around as nutty extraterrestrials bumping into planets to see who they can take over or whether they'll help somebody, maybe they won't. They actually have part of a guidance that's connected into the pure hue energy that makes up all of space. All that black area is not black. It's a golden white light, and it's non-nuclear and non-atomic, and it's a living power. And these more advanced races know how to work with zero-pointer toroidal energy, the energy of the universe. People on Earth don't know how to work with it yet at all. First thing they need to know. So these chapters in here, Oblivious or Paradise, a freedom so rare, the mighty Sayre's return, which has to do with Ambassador Torellian, when I met him. It's written in here. And for those who want to meet with uh, Ambassador Torellian or Sayre's, we you can go on the journey with us, you know, because every time Ambassador Torellian will go on the journey, take us to go on the journey, every sure. journey. I have a co-creative relationship with Torellian that I earned. It was not given to me just because I thought it was a neat idea. I wanted to guide people. I didn't want to guide people in the first place. I didn't want to serve as a guide for all these people. I had aspirations to do major film production. I still do. But this work came along because people needed it. The few people that had enough courage to come forward and go on these journeys uh, are doing so. We need 150 million people on this planet out of 8 billion to transform a planet. It takes a very small percentage, and we're not anywhere near there yet. But we're working towards it. It's heading in that direction. So 
They yeah, I want to share with the people. Sorry. Go ahead. They Go ahead. Can pick any technique they want. Yeah. But it's there. They'll get an intuition. They're going to start answering themselves when they go Correct. into Correct. Right? You've had the same experience. And instead of listening to others' experiences, you know, you start having your own direct experience, starting from this, reading this book and go on the techniques at the end of the book, you know. And if I would recommend go on the journeys too, because that's how I could have so many experiences during these almost seven years with you, Scott. Oh, you know, many of those, so many of those were in English, right? Yeah. And in Thai, but they were private. They were never put on the internet. Nobody ever knew they were taking place, except you and I had about nine other people for yes, four or correct. five years. So, or maybe it was two or three years. I can't remember now. But there were mm, hundreds, of those, many years. hundreds of those journeys we did that I have recorded. And I can't just put them on live on the internet because the people who did them with me and I with them at the time, there was no money involved and they were private. They were just for the people that went on the journeys. So they didn't help promote the books. They didn't help promote the work. They didn't do anything uh, except bring about a few grounded people so we could take the next step into releasing this to the public, which is what I started doing with you. Yeah, correct. And to start having your own direct experience, I recommend this book and go on the techniques at the end. And if you would like to really have experience, go on journeys like maybe once a month from the start. Because to me, I go on the journey every week, once or twice a week for almost seven years. You Great know, so I have to for you. And Perry has to actually, and she's an expert at it. I, I don't want to She's, a, she's quite adept at speaking English into Thai for the Thai people. Like the journey we just recorded tonight was very special. And I had a lot of questions and answers from people after we were done. Two, was it two hours, one hour, seven, eight, nine? Two, about almost two hours, yeah, two hours. Yeah, and then we had an hour of just talking and sharing, which is yeah. not on the recording, but it helped those people a great deal. Because when you yeah. guys, yeah, when you guys have a chance, have a chance to watch our videos with Thai people, I would like you to know that those Thai people to go on the journey with us, many of them have their own direct experience too. That's why they come uh, to go on the journey regularly, you know. We were going to go and explore. I've been reluctant to do this for some time because of so many phenomenal distractions that take place in the astral, causal, mental, and etheric planes. People on Earth have a body they're running in all those planes, not just the one they have on Earth. And they are been terrified to remember any of that because one time they did, and they had a direct connection above the void through those bodies to this life. And that was cut off, taken from them, suppressed, or they were terrorized out of remembering it. This work reverses that. It's the it is the way that Satnam and other beings are working with this work to help reverse that. And it's, it's not about uh, power, fame, money, or fortune. The motivation does not come from those things. And it certainly doesn't motivate the people I work with at all. So I had to be very careful how to approach this in the public and charge any money for it or even have a living. Because I've still spent far more money on all this work and the books than I've ever made. People don't realize this. If I wanted to just make entertainment, I could have been a multimillionaire years ago. But that's yeah. not what it's about. I believe so, because with what you know, you know. <laughs> you know a lot. You got to have enough people awake enough to support it. And most people aren't. They, they don't mind being entertained or going to movies or watching famous films and then going about their lives. They still don't know anything. Or they believe something, or they have faith in something, which is fine. But then they live their whole lives with that and know nothing more. They're expected to just be given it all when they go to some heaven, as if they had earned it. But how can anybody be invited to some heaven as irresponsible brats who don't want to get off their ass and change anything and it's just going to all be done for them? That's not the way the real heavens work at all. And they'd know that if they were going to them consciously. So this work provides an avenue for them to begin to remember how to do that because they were made to forget how to do that completely.
I agree to remember you have to work on it. You just can't sit and do nothing. You know, nothing no. will come to you. Yeah. I know that's how people are taught on earth, but look at the condition of this earth. With all the religions on the planet, collectively, and all the people praying, collectively, the world has not improved one tiny fraction in all that time. In fact, it's getting worse and more destructive because leaders are making decisions based on fear and fear is negative and the only thing that can come back is destructive from that. It's inevitable. So something has to intervene here to save us or choose not to. If it chooses not to, we'd already be dead already because nuclear war would have already happened or something else. Polar shifts would have happened already. But all that's been suspended. And sooner or later, probably sooner than much later, this thing called disclosure has to take place for the people of this planet because it's required by beings far more advanced now. Because if they let people on earth do whatever they want without their kind intervention to some degree, people and governments will ruin this planet. They'll destroy everything again, which means it has been done long ago. Millions of years ago, there was a nuclear war on this planet and all life was extinguished and then it had to be recolonized and repopulated. What people are trying to do with those bombs is trying to repeat an aberrated, subconscious, destructive, compulsive behavior. They already went through once. And are consciously trying to do it again. Fortunately, we're not being allowed to do that. Nobody has come here from the stars to run governments here. Nobody wants that burden. But they're not going to let us blow ourselves up because they have other plans to get back their relatives and friends and associates that are unconscious running bodies on earth. They used to be out there in the greater God. And we have a right to recover that. People don't realize they have that right. And most people think it should just be given to them on a golden platter while they sit there. Just boom, I am God realized I'm enlightened. If that happened to them, they would destroy themselves 24 hours with the increase of the power running through them because all their subconscious spheres would be there misdirecting that energy and it would wipe themselves out with it. So beings who are masterful do not give away stuff. They make us do the work until we can't do any more. Then they help us over the rough hurdles because they know then we'll, if they give us some help, they know we'll keep it respectfully. That's how real master teachers work. They don't wave a magic wand and set someone free just because they believe in somebody or something. That doesn't train people to do anything. They don't learn anything. Not really. We're supposed to be conscious, trustworthy co-creators with the source behind all life. That's what an atma, what a soul is for. And people don't remember that. So they do stuff screwy all along the way. But it's still the same thing underneath all the fear is that same direction. It comes from the source behind all life. And we can't know that source unless we go to it and visit. Correct. And most of the time when, when we take people to go to meet with source, many times people will cry, you know, tears of joy. You know? Yeah, because the, what they don't know is they have been playing around running bodies in the lower planes of time and space on millions of worlds for billions of years. And they haven't remembered a damn thing, pardon my language, about going back to source. We were supposed to go play in bodies and bring the information of what we learned back to that source. This is what we call a failed experiment of good and evil because it is a failed experiment. It's broken. It doesn't work. It was intended to cattle prod people with this negative, like their feet coming close to the fires of hell and then have them run in the right direction spiritually away from it. But that's not what it did. It got people wrapped up in the lower world so they couldn't remember how to get out of it. That has to change in people for them to progress. So it's more that people need to remember who they are as an atma, spherical energy being, not one of these. They've always been. Because then all those higher faculties and these layers of being begin to turn on. And they begin to remember all the stuff they were made to forget. All the stuff that's important for them to be realized what that is 
and how to co-create with what they call God or source or prime creator. Because we're not meant to worship it. We're meant to res know it and respect it and all life and each other. That is the only requirement. Simple sounding, isn't it? Yes. But people aren't doing that on earth, are they? For the most part, respecting no. each other. So no. that has to change too. We good? Okay. Yes, we are good. Thank you, Scott. But those who are interested to know more about Scott's work can go to your website, which is the link under this video. You can always click there and contact him directly, you know. That's it. Thank you very much, Perry. <laughs> and again, I want to thank you for having the courage. You've had to do this work for years, trusting in something until you finally had your own experience. And now you know. You know. Yeah, because yourself. I have changed so much. My life is much happier better you know more living in more serenity you know calm loving with myself, <laughs> loving doesn't, mean, myself. doesn't mean that perry and i don't realize that gravity's a bitch and we're living on a planet with gravity and gravity pulls us down and we're supposed to be yeah. leaving the body in the sleep state which we do every night and consciously leave it and go explore which people do every night but they haven't learned how to bring back awareness of any of it when they wake that body up in the morning. They think yeah. that's normal. Guess what? It isn't. It's not normal at all. <laughs> all right. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Onward and upward.